Chapter 8 Dangerous Duo The next week was not fun. Every chance he got, Link did something mean, like step on my red pen and break it, or something embarrassing, like push me into a bunch of fourth grade girls in the cafeteria, or something annoying, like hide my book bag under the seats at the back of the bus. I was starting to think that Link was a bully because Link was a bully, and I was starting to think there was nothing I could do about it except live with it every day for the rest of my life. Just when I was sure things could not get worse, they did. Thanks to Mrs. Brattle, Thanksgiving was coming and we all had to do a social studies project about it. Mrs. Brattle planned all the topics and Mrs. Brattle wanted everyone to work in pairs and Mrs. Brattle chose the pairs. And one pair was Jake Drake and Link Baxter. We had to do a report to show how the Native Americans had lived. Link loved it. He thought it was so funny, a big joke. He said, Hey Flake, this is great. It's you and me. We get to make a TP together. Tell you what, I'll do the T part and you can take care of the P. Get it? The P? Of course I wanted to tell Link how dumb he was because the Native Americans at the first Thanksgiving never saw a TP. They lived in wet too, round wigwams made of poles and bark, and they made long houses too. But you don't say things like that to a super bully. I went up to Mrs. Brattle when everyone else went to lunch. I said, Mrs. Brattle, I don't think I should work with Link on the Thanksgiving project. She said, oh, why is that? Well, I said, I just think I do better with someone else. Mrs. Brattle said, I'm sorry, but everyone else is already paired up, Jake. I'm sure you and Link will do just fine. On the bus home that day, Link said, that Thanksgiving thing, you're going to do the report, Flake. I don't do dumb stuff like that. I said, what do you mean? We're partners. Link said, yeah, right, and you're the partner who has to do the report. The next day, we had library period. I watched Link. He went right to the reference section. He got the N encyclopedia. Good, I thought he's going to look up things about the Native Americans. Link carried the encyclopedia to a table at the back of the library. My partner was working. Looked good to me. I went to find some other stuff about Native Americans in Massachusetts. Near the end of the period, I went to show Link the books I found. He looked up and said, Great job, Flake. I said, What did you find? And he said, Take a look. Behind the encyclopedia, Link was reading a book of Garfield cartoons. He said, I love social studies, don't you? So there it was. My partner wasn't just a super bully. He was also a moron. Then it was the day before the project was due. I had found all the books. I had found all the pictures. I had used my best handwriting to make some labels. I had stuff I could tell about, but we still didn't have a project or anything to show the class. At the end of the day, Mrs. Brattle said, Remember, all the Thanksgiving projects are due tomorrow. So after we got off the bus that afternoon, Link came up to me. He said, Hey, Flake, did you finish that dumb report yet? And I said, No, we still have to make something to show about the Native Americans. And he said, Well, you better finish it tonight. It was the way he said it, like he could just order me around. He thought he could just look at me and make me do whatever he wanted me to. But I was tired of doing all the work. It wasn't fair. Something inside me snapped and I said, No, I'm not going to. Link took a step closer. He said, What? I said, I'm not going to. I don't care what you say or what you do. I'm not going to make a wigwam or anything else by myself. And if you don't help, then I guess we're just going to get an F on our report. 
Link looked down at me with his beady little bully eyes. He clenched his fists. For a second, I thought I had made a big mistake. I was about to get pounded into the sidewalk. Then suddenly he shrugged. He said, fine, okay. Come over to my house about 3.30. We'll make a stupid poster or something. Then he just turned and started walking home. Standing there in the November sunshine at the corner of Greenwood and Park, I felt like something had changed. It didn't feel like I had killed a dragon or anything. It was more like back when I was five. Every night, I thought there was a monster under my bed. And then one night, I'd gotten brave enough to look and it wasn't there. No monster. But in 45 minutes, I was going to have to go knock on Link's door. Who would open it? Would it be my social studies partner or a monster?